Where's your deer? Oh, there she is. This might be a problem. Hey guys, and welcome back to the WT Farm Girl channel. The Chili Girl channel. It is really cold today. It's beautiful. The skies are beautiful. Look at that sun and the clouds. Oh, the colors are gorgeous. The wind is just bitter. Let's take a look at the projects we have going on right now. Ready? approximately of the footprint of the office. Now I did check with the builder to see if it's 20 foot with the porch or 20 foot before the porch. And I think the porch is four feet. So these are kind of things I need to know <laughs> ahead of time. So there's 12 foot and then uh once you actually get it down, it doesn't look that large. And you gotta go through and put your walls and stuff in too. So, usable space. If you order like 20 yards of millions, we can dump some here and then just... Um... Are you thinking you would dump it right over top of the grass? Or would we like kill off the grass and scalp it down first? You can go right over top of the grass. Really? All right, so I apologize about the wind noise. So the first issue we ran into with putting the office on that side of the house is that our circuit breaker on the back end of the house here is actually entirely full. Um, I think Eric was saying we need a 30 amp breaker. Right now we've got a 15 amp breaker run over there for the sugar shack. That's not gonna be adequate for computer equipment for an office plus a heater slash air conditioner. So we're looking at probably 200 feet worth of electrical wire. Hi Vanta, hi. Big shout out to Mr. Fitzgerald for the very generous donation towards the office. Thank you so much, you, <laughs> that is so appreciated. It is gonna go directly to wiring actually because that's one of the first things we're gonna have to get purchased. So Eric's proposing to uh, reconfigure some of these. I guess you can get like a double breaker thing. Okay, don't quote me on technicalities, guys. <laughs> the barn has got a lot of circuits open. That would have been really nice to connect to, but um, you know, you, you work with what you have, right? get this over here. I don't know how much this weighs, but it's gonna weigh a lot. All right, I'm gonna attempt first to grab it and see what we've got. So hopefully it'll hook. And if not, we'll have to go to plan B or maybe C.
Like, literally, guys, I cannot even feel this on the loader. Holy cow. I'm telling you guys, this tractor is a beast. Eric keeps saying, we should sell it and get two smaller tractors. I'm like, what is wrong with you? Like, this right here is proof in the pudding about why big tractors are useful. This just seems really fast for me. Okay. I would show you my face right now, but I'm fully expecting this at any second to just fall. And I don't want you guys to miss the action. I have to go right here. Because there's a, actually a dirt mound right there that Eric left one year. Okay, so that's one. Oh gosh. Woo! Got one. They got two. Alright. Okay. So high five guys. Yes, I am um, like I I'm seriously not kidding. I was so nervous that that was gonna go bad. I mean I could just see it. I've had enough experience with railroad ties. Yeah. All right, so we're gonna get the rest of this loaded up. I need some help with Brianna. Okay. Oh, okay. Oh, okay. So I am going to have to edit out all the sound on this because it is so windy. There is no wind filter that is going to take this noise off. So I'm going to get some nice music. We're going to go through. Um, I will show you, but after we cleared off all the logs, there was a lot of bark and stuff left over. The kids scooped a lot of it out, but, you know, I really just want to get this stuff out of here. So the best thing to do, yeah, put that little landscaping rake thing to use. It's not a land driveway rake. I don't know what it's called. It's a rake. It's a field rake. We're going to put it to use, clear out the area, um, and then maybe go back through again and mow the grass around it. So. to go looking for your dog and you find her curled up in her favorite little sleepy spot in the barn little barn pup oh you tired you can go back to sleep I'm sorry all right so Eric wins he got the first ear down uh, he says it's a small or medium-sized doe uh, normally we let deer grow up to be full-size big fat mature does and bucks and the buck rule is you try not to take anything smaller than what you took previous years. Uh, so it's got to be same size or larger. Although I have a feeling it's going to be a baby because, you know, like most of you guys have uh, size identification issues where things seem larger than they really are. <laughs> Every year I get the text, I saw, shot a giant doe and he goes and finds it and it's just a tiny button buck <laughs> or something to that degree. So anyway, I'm going to go get the side-by-side -side and the sled and haul it out of the woods. Um, but good on Eric for you know, getting one down. At least we'll have some extra meat for the freezer. Alright, so here's the stand that Eric was up in. I mean, it, it's kind of relative as far as what you consider to be big and what I consider to be big. I would take my guess it's probably a baby. <laughs> Just hope she's not a baby. Yeah, but that's kind of sad because we need babies for next year. Not to mention, it's the same amount of work for less meat. Fat. 
Are you gonna show me how you climb down? <laughs> yeah, see this? I've done this one. It makes me nervous with Eric doing it because he has to stand on that little piddly branch. That's a lot of ladder steps to climb up and down. Especially on these birch trees, or it's not birch, it's uh, beech. Beech trees have smooth bark. And so those straps don't always bite in. <laughs> there you have it. All right, let's go check out your baby. I gotta harass him a little bit. I know, it, it really is. I mean, we actually saw a lot of deer this spring. Lots of deer this spring and this summer all the time out in the back hay field. But then very slowly we saw not so many deer and no turkeys at all. And it's, well, the only turkeys we saw were the ones that was in my hayfield nesting. That was it. No other turkeys. Which is crazy because every year we're out here hunting, we see turkeys. Don't you? You see them or you hear them. Didn't see anything or hear anything with turkeys this year. I think it's nothing for animals out here. Like even walking in the woods, there's no squirrels. There's no birds. It's like everything died. It's like the woods caught COVID and died. What are you, what are you using to hunt with? It's an AR-10. AR-10. Which is a, it uses a 308 round. And uh, if we decide to do maple syrup 2021, we're gonna have to fix all these lines. Look at, that's the very end of our maple syrup line right there. <laughs> Where's your deer? Oh, there she is. Oh, yeah, that's definitely a little one. That's, that's a nugget there. This, this is like an Alabama deer. <laughs> Who fired, who fired that shot? Was the neighbor? I think she's only a year old. Uh, Not a year old. Like... Barely off her spots. You know, I passed two up this size, but. Where do you shoot her? Oh, please don't tell me. Yo, you're cleaning this one out. Yeah, but look how fat her stomach is. I would dare to guess that you probably exploded out some of her stomach too. And on bonus side, at least she dropped her and she died fast. So, way to go. <sighs> yeah, there is like not much meat on this thing. Look at this arm. I it's know, like. It's shiny, dude. There's like nothing I on told that. that you want me to shoot the shiny thing? No, you didn't. You said I've got a medium sized deer. Do you want me to shoot it? I should know better by now that when Eric says medium sized, he means nugget size. <laughs> How far away was she? Was she like right up by you? Oh, you couldn't tell that that was a tiny little thing? I said it was a small deer. No, you said it was a medium sized deer. Medium size would be like full year old, not a eight month old. I'll go let her go. Well, <laughs> it's one picking is, I was like, I don't know. I better see what she's doing. Yeah, it's, it's just a tough year. Okay, we're in a pandemic. So you could be risking not having food in the freezer. Okay, so you could be risking having chicken every night for dinner. <laughs> Cause that's the reality right now. All our beef is gone. We, I am not joking. We ate an entire cow in one year. Yeah, we pigged hard on that cow that we raised. Cause it was so delicious. Um, you guys have asked, are we getting more cows and why we haven't got more cows? And the answer is because there weren't any. <laughs> because of the pandemic, every single person that had two acres or more that they were living on went out and bought a cow. Or calf or cattle, cow creature. I know a cow is a female, so pardon my... <laughs> I'm not a rancher, so. Wait, does she have an Adam's apple? Oh my gracious, be nice to our dinner. Oh my gosh, she looks like she's still alive. Oh wait, 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 I have, I have the perfect prank. <laughs> Since she's so small, we can lift her up. <laughs> we can lift her up and have her tap on the window and scare Aaron. <laughs> Remember that year he was petrified of deer coming in his bedroom? <laughs> 
Why am I cleaning it? You're the one who made a mess of it. Look at she's bloating up. I, that's... I asked you, I said, you want me to shoot the deer? <laughs> you just don't want to clean up your carnage, I think is what the problem is. Oh, I'm freaking cold. Oh, uh, well, if the insides over here are warm. Word, how long have you guys been sitting there for? Well, hey, Senti here. Let's go get something done. All right, so I decided we're gonna do a little bit more prep work on the building site for the shed. Um, kind of went back and forth on a couple different ideas. I know a lot of you guys are gonna be saying number one to either dig a hole and put the gravel in or make a frame base to put the gravel into. Eric's idea was to just stick the gravel down and call it a day. So I think I'm going to kind of dig out a little bit, maybe. I, I don't know. might be a problem. I can get the width, but the length, this hill comes to a taper. All right, so as you can see, um, I gotta let you in on a little secret. My tape measure only measures to 25 feet and I need 26. I don't know exactly how long this office is gonna be. See, the guy didn't send me the foundation measurements, so I'm just kind of shooting in the dark. Now, from what I read online, you want one foot on either side of your structure so that as it rains, the water doesn't spatter up from the ground with dirt and whatever and cause it to rot. So we're gonna extend the gravel out a foot on each end. However, the front and the back, I don't know if the porch is included. One of you guys already asked about that. I don't know. <laughs> Nonetheless, we know it's either going to be 20 feet total or 24 feet total, because I'm pretty sure their porches were four feet long, four feet wide. So um, I did measure out the gravel for 26 feet. Better safe than sorry. But the problem is we're already downhill right here by a lot. Um, if I were to estimate, I'd say maybe almost 12 inches, maybe 10 inches below up there. I have got to get this done today because it's getting dropped sometime tomorrow. Could be in the morning. Tuesday is gonna start the snowstorm. So this has to be leveled and prepped. Okay, so here are my options. Uh, I could get the tiller and I can till up this whole bed and till a little bit deeper for the front end and then kind of push that dirt towards the back end. Um, can I do that? Yes, I can. Can I do it well? That is the pressing question. I'm having visions of my shed just kind of floating down this hill. <laughs> You'd be sitting there editing video one day and it's like full on virtual reality where you're just like feeling it as you go. <laughs> No, hopefully not. That would be terrible. First of all, you want the back end of it reinforced, kind of like a retaining wall. Well, it pretty much would be a retaining wall. So I'd have to get uh, a 14 foot long piece of wood and anchor it into the ground. Um, ideally, it would be treated. Treated lumber is gonna hold up. Regular lumber, not so much. I have an idea. Ready? 
it's a tractor idea. Oh no. Oh no. I don't think this is gonna work. Oh no. Oh, please. Do you have any for me? Oh no. We're gonna have to do a little poking around here. Um, these are railroad ties. So Eric actually ordered a semi-truck load of railroad ties ages ago. And uh, yeah, they've kind of been disintegrating sitting here all packaged up together, I think. So we've got one loose right here. And I think that's all I have out here. Oh, a lot of trees, holy cow. And those trees definitely seem better days. <gasps> oh no! These are all packaged up too. Shoot. The idea I had was to use railroad ties. But the problem we have right now is that I have to cut the strap, the metal strap on these things. I have to cut it. Uh, yep. So I think we're gonna do this Eric style. Eric has a very specific technique for cutting the straps on these things. So previously what Eric would do is he would fork the strap, as you can see from all of these broken straps, and uh, he'd lift up on it and it would snap. Unfortunately, um, this was lifting up the entire stack, which is not what it was supposed to do. So that means I have to go find something to cut that now, if I want to use that. It's like...
guys, so it's a total race against the clock. I'm not sure what time the snow is going to start flying, but expected accumulations are three to four inches. Wait, hold on. Come on, I want to get you thrown. What? Put it back down. I got to get you heaving it in there. This is what you get for not waiting for the camera. Don't make for a good blooper reel. Okay. <laughs>